um, and the giant special issue, which came out today. So I'll talk about that too. Uh, then uh, Beck and Pack are going to talk about some survey results. We host the uh, annual survey of GoGM members. Uh, Rob's going to look at uh, outputs, including the annual view. Uh, and then Rob will think about what's going on in 2020. So that's it. Here we go. Awards. Get the champagne ready to pop. So um, these are the Fred Mulder Awards, named after Fred Mulder, the founder of GoGen. Um, we give out three awards. So um, one on best open education research paper, which is published in Open Access Journal, and one for best open research practice, and a special new award this year, special award for outstanding open educational practice that we thought would allow, allow people to, that could have been an individual or a project, whatever. So drum rolls. The winners of these are, and I'm going to ask, uh, by the way, uh, the people who've got the awards to just say a couple of minutes to explain what their paper, project, award is about, and rather than me sort of trying to explain it, I think it'd be best. So on to first of all, best open education research paper is Aris and Olaf, um, Trends and Patterns in Distant Education, a synthesis of scholarly publications and a visualisation of the intellectual landscape. Congratulations, Aris. Uh, would you like to say words, a few words about uh, the sort of approach of the paper and, and what it covers? Um, I am really honoured. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you. And it, it's actually uh, very important to be recognised, especially by the uh, Gojian community. And uh, this paper actually is about uh, uh, distance education and. This is actually a follow-up paper uh, of two earlier papers uh, written by me and Olaf Savas uh, In this paper, we provide a bird view of the uh, entire field and uh, report our, our findings through uh, data mining and analytics approach, such as uh, social network analysis and text mining. Cool, thank you. I think it's a really important paper as well. Um, we've sort of done bits of this kind of work before um, on uh, and uh, in um, open education. So Katie and I did a paper, uh, sort of a similar approach. And I think it's kind of really takes it a lot further. I think it's really important because often people come to this area, and I think particularly in the pandemic, um, you, you'll know this, Aris, is that sort of everyone's become a distance educator in a way. It's like, and a lot of people don't know where to start with that. So I think this is kind of a really important sort of foundational paper for lots of people to come to. So. Uh, congratulations and thank you for submitting it. Really well deserved winner. So, on to the uh, next category of best open educational practice is uh, Glenda Cox and Digital Open Textbooks for Development. Uh, and also, huge congratulations to Glenda, uh, recently appointed UNESCO chair. So, uh, extra congratulations, Glenda. So, would you like to take us through uh, particularly open practice elements of this? Yes, um, and I would really like Michelle. Uh, Wilmers and Bianca to put on their cameras because this is a real team effort. There's Bianca. Hi, Bianca <laughs> and Michelle. And they also want to just say a short word uh, or two. Um, so firstly, I just want to say thank you so much for this acknowledgement, um, especially um, in the line of that it's the Fred Mulder Awards. And just to take a moment to to tribute uh, this work to Fred Mulder's inspirational um, way of being. And I was actually reminiscing with Bianca um, and Michelle this, this morning and just saying what how special Fred was to me. Um, and I met him in 2013 and he was a real mentor through the War for D project um, with my PhD, obviously in the right in the beginning of GoGN as well. He was one of the first people to read my proposal. Uh, so he was a real guiding light for, for me. And I remember breakfast sitting in Krakow talking about plans and just, just the most amazing man who, yeah, this tall Dutchman who was quite intimidating when you saw him, but when you got to know him, he was just such a sincere, kind man. And it was really a privilege to know him. Um, yeah, so this our project started in 2018. We're still hanging on. We are we have some funding from UCT actually till March next year, and we're really hoping to get more funding from UCT. 
So we've been working very hard to try and kind of um, hardly mainstream, but certainly make people more aware of this project. Um, and it has this research component, Bianca can touch on that. It has an implementation component where we um, actually produced open textbooks through grants. And then more recently, we've been involved in advocacy work to start a network across South Africa. So uh, uh, open textbooks for South Africa network. So we're, we're very excited about that and, and working um, you know, alongside other colleagues in South Africa. Um, and, and one of our biggest victories is to actually, we actually have an open textbook award now at UCT. We had the first one last year and another one this year. It's a small amount of money, 30,000 Rand, but we're so proud of it. We've had the most fantastic applications um, and, and you know, we've awarded three, three awards now. Um, and we're very, very proud of that. And that has really raised the level of, of kind of acknowledgement and recognition for open textbook work. So as you can imagine, that's something that, that we all want in our institutions um, as a way as a, of encouraging people to, to, to write open textbooks. And we've, uh, through that, discovered the most amazing open textbooks we didn't know um, existed. So not all through our project. So that was also very interesting. But yeah, I'd like to just hand over to Bianca for a few minutes and Michelle just to add their voices. Sure. Thanks, Glenda. Thank you, everyone, for having us here and for the great recognition we're getting from this award. So my name is Bianca, and I am the .4D researcher. And in my role, I've basically been responsible for the research arm of the project, um, doing a lot of the groundwork in our various research activities and um, our different kinds of data collection processes and working very closely with um, the the various kinds of grantees we had in our project in this regard. And we're really excited about this, the recognition we're getting um, with this award because, of the, because one of the key objectives um, of the project and of the research um, has been to make sure that we are very open in all of our practices um, and sharing all our work and all of our data and all of our instruments as well uh, openly on our varied institutional repositories. And we've been doing this mostly, firstly, to you know, encourage the reuse of our data and you know, engagement with our findings and the different instruments that we developed within the project, but also to encourage and to seek out opportunities to um, collaborate and opportunities to further mine the data that we've collected and the different kinds of, um, and to establish different kinds of collaborative work um, and build on this foundational work that we've established within Dot4D. So we're really hoping that, you know, whatever funding opportunities come our way in the future, we're, we're able to do this and we're able to continue building on what we've established so far. And yeah, I'm, I'm really keen and excited to see where all of this is gonna go. So thank you again. Over to you, Michelle. Thanks. As, hello, everybody. I'm Michelle Wilmers. I'm the Publishing and Implementation Manager of the Dot4D project. Nothing else to add from my side, just to reiterate the thanks and to say it's such an honor. We do aspire to walk the talk um, in terms of our open ethos towards what we're doing in, in every regard. So this award means a lot. Thank you, everybody, for the honor. Thanks very much. Thank and, you, uh, thank you again. Is. And we're hoping, uh, we're very busy at the moment writing chapters and we have an article in press and we're looking uh, to write something on models of open textbook for social justice. Um, and we're really hoping to be able to present next year face-to-face. -face. <laughs> um, totally. But we won't rely on that for anything though. But thank you very much, Goji Eng. You guys are amazing and inspirational and you've done so much for for me and my team thank you well thank you glenn thanks for those nice words about fred as well and i think that i think what's really impressive about this project i mean it's a it's a great project in its own right but the point i think bianca uh, made you know about how you've embedded open practice throughout it you know i think that was kind of a real model for other projects to take on as well so that's what's really impressive so thank you very much and thanks for submitting excellent um so on to the new special award Special Award for Outstanding Open Educational Practice. Um, and 
uh, this is a group of people but, uh, putting in the person who submitted it. So Leo Haverman, Understanding Data, Practice and Politics team. So the datapraxis.net team. So uh, Leo, I think Javier is here as well. Would you like to come in and uh, say you. something on that? Thank you very much. We are so, um, so honoured and so thrilled. Um, I, um, I feel... Um, like uh, it's it's a bit it's a bit mad for me to be be um the the main acceptor of this award because this is such a huge team effort and I'm a I'm a, a small part of this um, wonderful team um, and I I am so my, my my main reflection is what a um, lovely idea for an award how lovely to um, award it to us um, we're we're really thrilled and this this really is the an example of the kind of work that um, may not have come about without. Um, the GoGN network being such a, um, a powerful and generative um, force um, for all of us. And um, I'd love to invite Javier and uh, Carol to uh, say a, a few words from their point of view as well. Oh, thanks, Leo. Thanks, Martin. And, and GoGN network, I'm, I'm delighted. And, and it's actually quite emotional to, to close the year with, with this award. Um, it's been a lot of work. It's been a huge cooperation, a huge collaboration um, doing, doing this project. Uh, we have been very lucky to interact with great scholars and, and with, with basically all around and um, also with, with the group in, in Uruguay, uh, having to work with academics as students in the middle of the pandemic, developing um, weird things on, on data literacy has been really, really an amazing adventure. So, so thank you. Thank you a lot. Uh, Caro? Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I think I wanted to say that really the GoGN is a catalyzer of, of this because, for example, um, having Judith as part of the, so to say, pilot um, institution or person in Kenya to do some work with her is part of being part of this network. So I, and, and, and Uruguay in a way, of course, is, the, the relationship that is there already with Javiera and the work she does in Uruguay. But again, Virginia Rodes is part of the network as well of the GoGN. And so what I think here is that the, the GoGN is really a catalyzer, if that's the right word, um, of open practices. And what I think also is there is a lot of work to do um, in this project to think about you know, ways forward and how things can be not only out there as open, but how can we enable the use of it and, 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 and people taking advantage in the good sense of this. And, and again, I think the GoGN is very useful in that sense. And, and I'm, I'm, I, I'm always so grateful for this network. I, I can't just say it enough. And thank you for Leo and Javier and all the colleagues that are not here, but have been a fundamental part of this project. Um, because it's, yes, it's, it's, a, it's a group effort, really it is. So thank you. Thanks, Caroline. Yes, I, I think I, I sort of got the feeling very much missed it. it was um, very interpatico with GoGen. It's very much about the kind of the human side of all of these these developments as well, and kind of how to to make that real for people. I think so. So congratulations on on getting that going and, and getting such a good project up and running in such a difficult year as well. Um, so thank you. Well done, winners, all winners. Congratulations. Round of applause, please. So thank you for submitting uh, to the awards. Um, so it's a busy, busy day for GoGN. Um, as we, we are co-chairs of OER 22 next year, which takes place in April, um, 26th to 28th of April. Um, I mean, who knows what's going to happen? So you know, we could be in the middle of another pandemic of lockdown. But at the moment, the plan is, and also different to know whether who's prepared to travel that. The plan is there'll be one day face-to-face, -face, one day sort of asynchronous recorded videos and one day synchronous um, online. So you can submit whichever those you sort of want. And we're gonna try and run um, separately to that, a, a kind of mini GoGN seminar like the ones we used to run. Uh, all that's still kind of you know up for debate. Um, and so it's really a sort of trying to, <laughs> To, to put our toes back in the water of doing the face-to-face -face events and we'll see how that goes. Um, but regardless of, of the GoGN aspect, I think it's going to be, you know, we love the OER conference. It's always a great conference. So please consider uh, submitting papers for that. Um, so there's the call for papers there. 
and also uh, consider joining the uh, committee to um, be part of the conference committee. I think they'd really appreciate any GoGM members on there as well. So I think this is really good for us. It's kind of a good a good meeting of uh, the OER conference and GoGN, and I think we, you know we bring a lot to that conference, and they uh, equally I think they really help us raise the profile of GoGN. So very excited about that, and we'll be working on that in the new year. Also today, um, we launched the GIME special issue uh, with uh, papers from GoGM members. So that's the link there. Okay, good, thanks. Uh, put back sticking the link in there. So um, we put a call out for papers uh, last year asking for members to submit papers. Um, I think a number of people who are in this call submitted papers have been published there. And it was, it was fascinating to go through. And I think some of them are kind of works in progress. We said we wanted you know, a range of things. Some are kind of published works from uh, alumni, some are kind of you know early uh, works in progress. But just a really nice collection, an interesting collection um, of the type of work people are doing. And also, I think, um, so there's 11 different articles, I think, quite a range of styles of, of writing and approaching the way we do it. And I think that is very representative of GoGN itself as well. So I think it's, you know, there you are, that's your Christmas reading sorted for you. Please go away and have a look at the uh, Giant Special issue and, and share it amongst friends and things. I think it's a really great, uh, great issue and we're very proud of that. Um, Good, thank you. So I think that's me done. And then it's on to uh, who's doing this is Beck and Paco, isn't it? So I'll, I'll still drive, shall I? Or do you want me to? Um... If that's the right, Martha, that would be great. Thanks so much. Okay, I need to learn how to mute myself. Hi, everyone. Um, great to see you all. And congratulations again to all our award winners. Um, it's really fantastic. Um, so I'll be walking through this next section um, of the presentation on the annual survey. Um, if it's all right to go to the next slide, please, Martin, sorry. Thanks. And Paco as well, please uh, join in. So first of all, a big thank you to um, all of the people that contributed to our annual survey, as you probably all remember. Um, we do this every year um, in October time. And the aim, of course, is to check in um, with members and alumni and get feedback on what we're doing, what can we do better, how can we better support you, um, uh, what did you like about the, what we're doing um, and how we could improve. So really great to hear that we had um, kind of fairly even split between member and alumni responses to this with just over 20% of our um, of our members and alumni responding to the survey uh, this year. Next slide please, Martin, thanks. So I'm just gonna pick up on some highlights, I think through, we're gonna share some more of this in the annual report and we're taking a closer look um, uh, at the data as well over the coming weeks um, and kind of looking forward to see um, uh, what lessons and, and, and look closely at what people have been saying so we can make some changes in the new year and look forward. So just to quickly go through a few um, things. First of all, um, the top five benefits of GoGN. So this was um, really interesting to kind of see with number one being webinars, um, which obviously given um, the current um, pandemic and uh, the changes that we've made in terms of increasing the diversity and range of sessions that we've got online, it was really great to see that um, number one um, was that aspect. Um, as well as number four, which was the online mini seminars. So um, you may remember we had things like the communication special earlier in the year, and as well things like some of our member research specials. Um, so it was really great to see that they featured in the top five benefits. We also increased our support for attending conferences. So OE Global, OER 21, um, Open Ed. Um, so we had this support for participation um, uh, and increasing that this year. So that came in at number two, um, followed by our kind of Twitter, WhatsApp group, social media, our kind of presence there at three, and then five, our newsletter as well, which is obviously goes out to all um, members and alumni and um, the friends network with updates on what we're doing. So really about kind of, um, yeah, communicating and networking um, and bringing um, our membership and, and um, wider circles kind of together. Next slide, please, Martin, thanks. Fabulous. So just a couple of quotes here from, um, uh, from the survey. Um, the first one here, I think, um, 
is a really nice reflection of um, the type of activities that we're doing um, for GoGN. As I mentioned, we've kind of got quite a diversity of, of, of um, different kind of online sessions. And I know we're going to talk and review some of these um, shortly. Um, I think also we make all of these available, as you probably are aware, on our YouTube channel. So if you do miss them, then they are available to catch up with. So it was really great to hear that, um, obviously with time zone differences as well, um, that people are kind of going and watching things afterwards. So that's great. Um, another thing that we've started doing is reaching out um, uh, to, uh, to folks and asking if they would like to participate um, uh, in what we're doing. So obviously the general call goes out, but also that kind of personal um, uh, reaching out to, to members and alumni asking them to kind of, um, if they'd like to participate in something. So it was really nice to hear um, feedback, um, as you can see in the quote here, um, that that's appreciated by, by members. Thanks so much. Next slide, please, Martin, thanks. And that's good to see that, um, Alice, that, that you, uh, yeah, you uh, um, appreciate the newsletter as well. That's great, thank you. So most important features of GoGen, um, this is quite interesting. Um, in comparison to last year. So um, number one, we've got community of peers, the same as in our 2020 uh, survey. Um, but then actually we kind of see a slight shift. So number two is research communications and research advice, advice and open practices, which I think was also at number three in 2020. I think the kind of change and move for research communications is of course, we've had a number of kind of collaborative GoGM research publications over the past 12 months. So thinking about the conceptual frameworks, uh, guide and other publications, the research reviews, um, we'll, we'll talk a bit more about these uh, later on. Um, so that's really coming through, I think, um, in this survey um, response here and that people are really valuing that. So that's a really positive, um, uh, positive to see um, coming through in the survey here. Thanks, next slide please, Martin, thanks. Just some, um, Quotes here, both from members and alumni, to kind of um, really thinking about that community aspect of what we do um, and how uh, one of the things is a network as GoGN, um, connecting people to people working on open education uh, topics, that sense of community around um, researching open education. A really great quote here for, um, from uh, one of our current members around kind of feeling less isolated in their work and that kind of connection and pastoral element as well in the second uh, quote here, which I think is um, also reflected in, in through the survey and through the kind of um, focus uh, and, uh, and feedback we hear around community and the network as a whole and, and what people think around that. Thanks, next slide, please. Oh, lovely. Okay, so initial observation. So, we are still kind of looking at the data at the moment and, and Paco, please jump in as well in a moment and, uh, and uh, with some observations here. So I think, as I mentioned a moment ago, I think really positively reflecting on our increased support for online conference funding, kind of increased range of webinar topics and online activity. Uh, and again, as I mentioned a moment ago, the collaborative research outputs, both the fact that, you know, there's an opportunity to participate and in these or to kind of access them. Um, and, and Rob will talk a bit more about the reach of some of these research um, outputs a bit later on the call, but really positively received, so that's really wonderful. Um, as always, there's suggestions from members um, in the survey regarding what we could um, improve activities, other things that we could be doing, and we'll be looking at those, as I mentioned, to kind of take those into what we're doing um, in the new year. And then also, obviously, there's been some really, um, as there was in the previous survey, some really great feedback around management of the network and what we do. So that was really good. Um, as I mentioned, we'll be looking more closely at the survey findings over the coming weeks. Paco, I don't know if you wanted to jump in and um, yes. give any reflections, yeah. please. Thanks. Thank you. No, I, I think it's, it's something interesting because, uh, I mean, it's the second uh, report from the space and, and uh, you realize when analyzing the data, is that okay the first first one last year it was kind of like a shock so we are in the pandemic uh what's the reaction we want to uh, to have how to move forward as a network and and this year you see okay we are uh, still uh in a pandemic with uh, uh, different approaches different situations 
and uh, you see the longer impact of some of the uh, approaches used and as well as reflected on the feedback so yeah very interesting data and got to see the, the positive feedback and, and ideas to move forward thanks so much oh, and just to finally um before we go on to the next section just a couple more of um quotes here from um alumni uh, around the community aspects as well and the emotional support that the network offers. Um, yeah, so just to end on those, those notes there and also to thank everyone again for participating in the survey. And if you didn't participate um, this year, then please, when we, um, uh, feedback is always welcome, but this survey really is an important um, opportunity. So we really value everyone's inputs. Thanks so much again. Thanks, Martin. Thanks, Peck. I think it's interesting the word emotional comes up quite a few times. You know, we have to talk about the kind of academic support, but I think that emotional support is just as valuable. I like a quote about the emotional push to get over the finish line. I think that's that's a really valuable part of the network. Good. Thank you, Peck. Um, yeah, by the way, I've had to take my Santa hat off. It was just overheating my head. Um, oh, oh, sorry. This is you too, Beck. Yeah, it is. Sorry, surprise. Sorry, I forgot this. Um, it was coming up. So yeah, next steps. Apologies. So um, you'll see that there'll be some results in the um, upcoming annual review. Obviously, as I mentioned, we're going to do um, take a closer look at the survey um, data. This was just a provisional kind of um, look and develop recommendations and share actions to take forward next year. Um, so yeah, thanks once again to everyone who participated. So I think it's on to you now, Rob. Do you want me? I'll carry on driving. Um, I can I can take over if you want. I've got it queued up. So okay, I'll stop sharing. Good. And then I will share. Look at that festive background, Rob. Wow. Yeah, I've moved into a more festive room. Gone for it big style. Uh, it's going to be like one of those TV shows. I expect Rob to start crooning and <laughs> in chair soon. And um. So actually, I might have to ask you to do the slides, Martin, because this is my new machine, and it's I've got to do some sort of authorization process before Here I can yeah. Chrome into Zoom. Uh, okay, uh, no, we don't want my no. Uh, I'll stop sharing. I've just shared emails. You don't want that? Yeah, and that's security breach. <laughs> security breach. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bit what I'm saying. I hate this GoGN stuff. Right, GDPR. Um... <laughs> get them on the phone. <laughs> Where's the, oh, there we are, sorry. Thank you. Um, okay, slight confusion there. Uh, so I'm gonna talk a bit about the outputs first from this year. Go to the next slide, please, Martin. Thank you. Um, so uh, in a way, the sort of main um, researchy output from the network this year was the uh, Conceptual Frameworks Guide and um, that was always envisaged as the companion piece to the research methods handbook um, but this time rather than focusing on the um, the sort of methodology stuff which is actually you know there's quite a lot of material out there written about research methods um, this one focused on conceptual frameworks and how they're used in research specifically in open education um, and so first of all thanks to everyone who contributed to it um, I hope you found it a useful process. I felt like I learned quite a lot working on this, and I don't think I ever kind of uh, dived as deeply into this stuff um, before. Um, so I thought it was quite a useful exercise, and I hope members find it useful too. Uh, there's a link there to the um, webinar which accompanied the launch, which um, goes through in more detail um, what's in the guide itself. Uh, can we have the next slide, please? Um, and last month we published the uh, 2021 edition of the research review and in the research review we um, get some volunteer reviewers and we gather up a bunch of papers around themes that are of interest to people who are um, in the network and then we do a series of sort of 500 words or so reviews and uh, cluster them together. Um, I also think this is a pretty useful exercise to take part in. Um, I always feel like you sort of read things a bit better or a bit more fully when you have to review them um, and being able to get lots of different takes on stuff from people um, a lot of the time stuff that's close to their own area of um, specialization 
I think you can learn quite a lot um, and efficiently, which I also like, you know, you just, you only have to review two or three, but when you put it all together, there's quite a useful collection of stuff uh, for everyone in the network. So I think this has quite been quite a successful um, approach to sort of coordinating and using a bit of collective intelligence uh, to develop this shared understanding of what's going on um, in contemporary research. Um, and so we'll be repeating that again next year. Again, there's a link there if you want to watch the webinar about that. Can I have the next slide, please? Uh, and so the final um, uh, publication is the annual review. And like last year, this is an overview of what's been happening in the network, what's been achieved, uh, how have we changed in terms of new members, what do our members think about what we're doing. Um, this one also includes a summary of the uh, diversity, equity and inclusion project and uh, the recommendations that they make. And it's uh, going, to, going to press, as it were, pretty soon. Uh, so Monday is when the official version will come out. Um, but a lot of the content we're, we're covering in this webinar this week. Uh, thanks, Martin. Could the next slide, please? Um, so just on those uh, um, publications, uh, I think the idea next year will be to do expanded versions, uh, second editions of the Central Frameworks Guide and the Methods Handbook. So look out for an opportunity there to contribute and get your uh, uh, have your say in those new editions. Um, so here's the timeline um, for this year um, and what's been going on. Obviously, the pandemic has provided the backdrop for a lot of this stuff. Uh, in January, we had our drop-in session, and we also opened the uh, call for papers for the special issue of JOIN, which was published today. Uh, the conceptual framework uh, writing process started in February, and um, the original concept with, the, with that was we would have a face-to-face -face workshop, and originally OER20 was going to be for the research methods handbook. And uh, I was a little unsure how well it would translate to having a webinar-based approach, but I think it worked pretty well in the end. Um, in March, um, I guess this is the start of the DEI project, um, which Karina was coordinating, uh, working with Viv. Uh, in April, Beck mentioned earlier the communication special, and um, we also had the uh, Wiki Education Wikipedia training and a visualize, visualizing your research workshop with Brian. Um, and I think the, the takeover of all the OER conferences by GoGN uh, continued there with uh, OER uh, Domains 21. I was about to press the button to go to the next slide. Can you do it please, Martin? Thanks. Uh, in May, the new member research special. And I, I think this is quite a, quite a good, um, good thing that we have with new members specifically having sessions. I think it's a bit harder when it's all online, it's a bit harder to, um, really get to the core of what's going on. So I, I, I quite like these new members um, focus. Um, and at the other end of the, the scale, we have the fellow fellowship cohort uh, round two launch. And um, I think some of the people here were involved in this, the, the Wiki Scholar Wikipedia training, um, getting into some uh, deep cuts on Wikipedia about open education. Um, and over the summer, we had these two uh, focus uh, webinars for the research uh, fellows and um, you can find out more about that in the annual review but I think there's also some stuff on the website. Thanks Martin, come to the next slide. Sorry that's the cat, hang on. Um, so in September we published the conceptual frameworks guide and uh, we also had significant presence at OE Global 21. Uh, in October, we had the members research special. Again, some of those people are here today. Uh, and we also had our drop-in session. So um, we set some time aside where anyone could come in and, and chat to the team. Um, more presence at conferences, at Open Ed in October. And we also launched the nominations process for the awards and invited people to contribute to the survey. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, you missed out on uh, the GoGN uh, team away day in Milton Keynes. It's, it's pretty exciting. Went to the Jury's Inn and um, afterwards went for some Thai food. Pretty cool. 
uh, but we, we, we actually haven't seen each other in two years. So um, that was good to actually, um, you know, connect and uh, spend some time together. Um, I'm just going to move my chat thing. Uh, so the data practice team uh, led the Understanding Critical da Data Literacy Beyond Data Skills workshop. And we also published the uh, research review in November. And then here we are in December already, uh, the end of year celebration, uh, announcing the award winners, publishing the JIME special collection, and um, announcing the launch of fellowship cohort round three. Thanks, Martin. Have the next slide, please. So looking forward to next year, um, you're right, Leo, it is quite intense. Uh, so obviously this is, these are just kind of the, this, this is the rough shape of what we wanna do next year at the moment. Um, but we'll have another round of the fellowship scheme. The big thing for us coming up between now and April is gonna be the OER 22 conference chairing. <laughs> um, We'll also be there in Nantes, in France, when we have the face-to-face. Uh, -face, uh, I'm not sure whether to call it OE, OE Global 21 or 22, but it's it's the face-to-face -face part from this year, but taking part next year in Nantes. Um, and we'll also be announcing the call for participation in the uh, research review. Um, we're considering a, a, a Wikipedia sprint, an edit-a-thon in the summer. And we'll also be asking people for contributions to the second editions of the Central Framework Guide and the Research Methods Handbook, and we'll also be producing a GoGN Fellowships Handbook. Thanks, Martin. Uh, in the autumn, we'll have our annual survey next year. Uh, we're also planning to hold a face-to-face -face seminar uh, in. Well, are we, do we know where it is yet, or we just it's just unconfirmed? So we'll be looking for a place to do a face-to-face -face seminar in the autumn. Um, and we're also expecting to be at OpenEd in some form, uh, and we'll be looking to publish our research review. And then uh, this time next year, we'll have the Fred Mulder Awards. Um, we'll have the annual review uh, like this, and we'll also be interested in ideas for what happens next with GoGN. So our current um, grant phase, um, I think we'll be looking to go roughly to the end of next year and we're talking about maybe trying to get um, a small extension on that but the 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 format for a potential next phase of goji so we'll be asking members what you would like to see from gogn in the future and seeing what the world looks like as well i guess a year from now so that's the 2022 plan at the moment um, but the big thing is oer 22 and um, strongly encouraged to have a think about it, join the conference committee, get involved, and um, see it as a real opportunity actually for GoGN to make a mark on uh, the scene. Um, I think it really kind of um, is testament to how big the network has got and how kind of um, how strong its reputation now is that in less than 10 years from the concept, we're now, you know, organizing one of the major conferences. So, Pretty cool. Uh, can we have the next slide, Martin? I'm not sure if that's the end of this bit. Yeah. So I guess it's thanks from us. Thanks for everyone's contributions. And um, you know, we couldn't have a network without you all. And um, uh, we hope that you continue to find value in what we're doing and uh, in the contributions of other members. And um, we'll wish you a very good festive season and all the best for next year. Thanks, Rob. I'll also open up if anyone wants to ask us questions or um, say anything. Also, I would just like us to, if we can, where to, follow, that's where to find us. Um, let's look out for the annual report coming soon. But yeah, if anyone wants to grab the mic or say anything, then please do. But I just want to take the time to appreciate how cool that uh, graphic is there from Brian of the little penguin in the Wikipedia globe. Yeah, so thanks everyone for uh, participating this year. It's been another successful year, as you say, Leo, quite intense. And we've had to sort of like shift what we do online. So hopefully there'll be some element of face-to-face -face, uh, next year. 
we may get to see some of you again. But if not, I'm sure we'll have other chances to meet online. And congratulations to all our award winners again. Uh, well done all that work. Thank you, everyone. As Rob said, have a good holidays.